Hi, this is David Harper about Turtle with a quick look at the capital market line, which is a key idea in finance, a basic idea for FRM candidate customers. This spreadsheet is uploaded to the member page. And if we look at this plot here, this graph, the capital market line is illustrated by the blue straight or linear line right here. And in less than 10 minutes, I'm going to show you how we construct the capital market line. We need some assumptions, including the riskless rate, Assumptions as usual are in yellow, so I'll assume 7% for a riskless rate. Then I need assumptions for two assets. That's because the we have several criteria that underlie the capital asset pricing model. These are the assumptions that are part of the model, and they are rigorous and unrealistic, we know right away. Also, I'm going to assume about each of the assets here that they are fully characterized or fully described by their first two moments. What I mean by that is if we have an asset here, the first moment is the mean or expected return and the second moment is the measure of dispersion, which in our case is standard deviation. That's the same thing as volatility. Or if you like, we can talk about it as a variance because these are really the same thing. They're really the same measure of dispersion. The only difference is units. The variance is measured in squared units. And so I have a first moment and a second moment. And then under this mean variance framework, what we mean by mean variance framework is we only need a mean and a variance and we have fully described the asset. It means we don't care about or we ignore measures like skew and kurtosis. And so given these assumptions, my first asset A has an expected return of 10%. I just picked that and a volatility of 10%. Then I'll have another asset, asset B. I'll give it a higher expected return of 15%. And because it has a higher return, I'm going to make it riskier and say that it has a volatility of 20%. And so keep in mind, I've been very simplistic in deciding that the whole universe of risky assets consists, only includes, asset A and asset B. I only now need a correlation assumption between the two assets. So I'll assume 20%. That's all I need to construct the capital market line. Because now I have two risky assets. If I combine the two risky assets in the portfolio, there's a question of how will I mix them? I could have half and half. I could have 25% in A, 75% in B. I could have zero in A and 100% in B because it's higher risk, higher reward. I really have an infinite number of combinations of mix or asset allocation between A and B. So the portfolio that it consists of asset B is described by the nonlinear line here on this plot. And I have two colors for it. It starts here green in what we call the efficient frontier right here. But notice it's nonlinear, and then it, this is still the same line. I just changed the color as it shifts, as it moves out of the efficient frontier into the downside here, where it's red. This is still the portfolio. The difference here, the only difference here is the mix between asset A and asset B. The return of our portfolio that includes asset A plus asset B, the return is a linear function, a linear combination of the two assets. However, the volatility of our portfolio is a nonlinear function of the respective volatilities because of the correlation. So if we move over here to the right, what I've plotted simply here, here are the calculations again for the portfolio that includes both asset A and asset B. So for example, here's the portfolio that has zero that consists of zero of asset A and therefore 100% of asset B. That portfolio that includes only asset B, it has a volatility of 20% and expected return of 15%. Those were our input assumptions for asset B. And that is right about here on this line. Standard deviation of 20%. We can't see the y-axis, but it's an expected return of about 15%. Okay, that's the portfolio with only asset B. Now, I'm going to Let's move down a row and mix in just a little bit of asset A. Now we're at 10% of asset A, and that means we're 90% of asset B. So we have a little bit less of that higher risk, higher reward portfolio. Well, what we're doing is we're moving to the left here down this slope, down this green slope, into an area with slightly less return, but also less standard deviation. So here as we move to the left, we are mixing in asset B, 
into our portfolio till we get somewhere down here, somewhere right about here, where this portfolio is entirely asset B and no asset A, and it ends up being inferior. All of these points down right here, we could go straight up and find another portfolio that has the same standard deviation but a higher return so we would always prefer it so this is the efficient frontier but again this full line here is just determined by the mix of asset A and asset B and the portfolio volatility that's a calculation I covered just last week in our tutorial and then the expected return which is a simple linear combination now I would highlight two points on this line for you First, as the as we move from here from green to red, there's a point over here that is the furthest to the left that we call the minimum variance portfolio because it as it is the mix of A and B that produces the lowest standard deviation. It's the minimum risk. It's different than this red dot. This red dot indicates the market portfolio. It's the portfolio that under the assumptions that underlie cap M and equilibrium theory, it's the portfolio that all of our market participants would gravitate to. How do we get that? I'm going to move over to the right here. Simple answer really, this market portfolio is on this efficient frontier and it's the portfolio, the mix of asset A and B that produces the highest sharp ratio. And so let me just bring that calculation out real quick. Uh, the Sharpe Ratio is one of, if not the most important, risk-adjusted performance measure. It's a measure of return over or per unit of risk. It's the expected return on the portfolio minus the riskless rate divided by the volatility of the portfolio. Let me move it over here a little bit so I can see these headers. And so, for example, if we take this portfolio right here that has 10% in asset A, its sharp ratio is 0.41, and that is just because we have a expected return on the portfolio of 14.5% minus our riskless rate, which was 7%, divided by the portfolio volatility, which is here 18.2%. So for each combination, each portfolio combination of asset A and asset B, we can calculate a sharp ratio or return per unit of risk. And notice they're not all the same. And one of them is going to be the highest. And the highest is that market portfolio as indicated by this red dot, which is on our efficient frontier. So far, I haven't introduced the, the capital market line. So it's really the... Uh, a point on the efficient frontier. Okay, so now we can do the capital market line. If I go back over here, I'll move the formula for the sharp ratio out. And we've got an efficient frontier. We have a market portfolio here. And now we take a further step back. Now we know that everybody's decided that, that they're going to hold the market portfolio. That's going to be the risky portfolio. And now the asset allocation issue becomes how much market portfolio do we hold compared to a riskless asset like treasuries or cash that have no risk for us. So now we're taking a step back and the asset allocation decision is between that, the risk-free asset and the market portfolio which itself includes asset A and asset B. So the risk-free asset is right here on the y-axis. It's at 7%. And if we hold all of the risk-free asset, we're only going to get 7%, but we're also going to get no standard deviation. It has no volatility. So that's the portfolio right here. If we hold only the market portfolio, we're going to have the red dot here with the characteristics we just solved for. The mix... The asset allocation between risk lists and market portfolio is plotted by the capital market line, and that's what it is. If we move down here, this is us lending, lending, lending more and more and more until we're only earning the riskless rate. As we move over here, this, this line moves up, but still in linear fashion because we're borrowing in order to leverage the risk and return, uh, which serves as a multiplier on the market portfolio. And then we'll notice that because we can do this, 
all of these points on the blue line are superior to the efficient frontier, just as the efficient frontier was superior to these points here. So this becomes the capital market line. Somewhere along this line becomes, in theory, under all of our rigorous assumptions, the set of optimal asset allocations between the riskless asset and the market portfolio. So that explains capital market line. This is David Harper of the Bonnet Turtle. Thanks for your time.